There's a bit. Get him back in the water, that's a nice fish. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Orange trolling fly, you can't beat it. That was a trolling fly at like two feet. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I have a viewer question from Gerald up in Redding, California. Um, and I actually hope to answer this out on the water and I've made two attempts at it. Um, I was out at Jenkinson Reservoir, I totally filmed this and I didn't have audio. Um, and then this morning I went up to Sugar Pine Reservoir and uh, the ramp was covered with ice so I'm back here in my backyard studio because I couldn't launch my kayak. So I'm not really sure you're a lucky charm there, Gerald. <laughs> I'm just poking a little fun at you. Um, Gerald's question was, he, he was a paddle kayaker. He was a bank guy. Then he got a paddle kayak. Then he got a pedal kayak. Um, and he sees me out trolling a lot. And he noticed that I spend a lot of time top lining, or as he called it, flat lining for trout. And he just wanted more information. He wanted me to basically give an overview of what my rig is like, my thoughts on it, all that kind of stuff. So. Here we go, Gerald. I hope this is informative to everybody out there watching this. Um, top lining for trout is very temperature contingent. And here's my philosophy. I've said this on the channel a bunch of times. If I have water, and we're talking rainbow trout here, if I have water that is 65 degrees or less on the surface, I'm very confident that there are gonna be trout up on top, up near the surface, at some point during the day. Now, 56 degrees, that's the optimum comfortable temperature for rainbow trout and, you know, several other fish species, but we're, we're focused on rainbows here. So, the closer the water temperature is to 56, the better I like it because the better the trout like it. But having said that, if you have water that's 65 on top or less, you're gonna have trout up near the surface at some point during the day. Now, when are the best times to top line or flat line for trout? Well, low light periods, early and late, overcast days, or any time that you have chop on the water. And uh, one of the reasons I like top lining so much is if you think about rainbow trout, they are stream fish. They're all steelhead, you know, at heart in their genetic code and stream fish. They, they think that danger comes from above them but they also look up to feed. Rainbows are very turned on to feeding up. So they're looking for items that they want to eat above their head. Now, the low light period gives them confidence that nothing's going to reach in from above them and grab them, okay? So they feel safer then. And whenever you have chop on top of the water, that also makes them feel safer. So they're, they're more likely to move up to the surface. They just, they just know that bad stuff is up there waiting to get them. Bears, eagles, so on and so forth. But you know, that's balanced out by their desire to feed upward. So anytime the surface temperature is compatible for them, you could pretty much bet that if you run a lure underneath the surface, rainbow trout are gonna take notice of it. And if they feel comfortable enough, they're gonna shoot up there and they're gonna grab it. And you're gonna have a fish on the end of your line. So let's talk about the tackle that I use first. And then we'll talk about some lures and some basic, you know, technique. Um, this is one of my downrigger slash top lining rods. It's a conventional rod. Um, I use these for top lining and I also use a spinning rod a good deal. I like to use a spinning rod a lot in the kayak because often I'll be running one rod deeper, whether it's on my downrigger or more likely it's on my lead core rod. I'll get that rod out and working and then I can just take that spinning rod flip it out over there. I know I'm not gonna tangle the other line. I'll, le I'll let out a little more line until I got, you know, uh, adequate length of line out. I'll close the bale, put it in the holder, and that lure is just gonna swing right into the spread. And uh, 
those lines are going to work side by side nothing bad's going to happen i'm not going to get a tangle so often you'll see me using a spinning rod but i also use my conventional setups just like this everything is rigged up the same way let's start off here with the uh with the swivel now if you watch the channel a lot gerald you've seen this but i'm going to review for all the folks out there now i've got this good and tangled here of course because i'm always tangled there we go okay so this is my main line right here this is 10 pound test mono i bring it down to a bead and this could be 12 it could be eight um, i don't really like to go below eight when i'm trolling but uh, 10 is a good, a, good, a good bet for this type of thing. So I spool up most often with 10 for my main line. I bring the line through a bead. That is simply so I can see where the swivel is because, you know, low light conditions. I don't want to reel that swivel up into the eye of my rod. Bad things can happen. So that bead helps me to see where that swivel is. It can also collect weeds and stuff and keep them from running down to the lure. But the, the main application of that bead is to let me know where this swivel is. I have one of those bead chain trolling swivels there to, to limit line twist, and uh, there is a cross lock snap on the end of that. And then to that, I snap on my leader, and here's what my leader looks like. It is anywhere, I'm gonna kinda lean this up. I'm gonna lean this up on my tripod. I know I'm out of the frame, this is bad television, but do what we can, I'm back. So my leader, there's that swivel. My leader's about 40 inches long. It is tipped with a cross lock snap, not a snap swivel, just a snap. And in this case, I have one of my trigger spoon magnums on the end of it. Um, in terms of lures, typically when you're top lining, um, you're, at least for me, uh, with the exception of a maglip, I'm not running lures that really dive, okay? I want a lure that's gonna run pretty much in a, in a level line. Um, might be running a trigger spoon. You could be running a cast master. I might be running one of my, my mini trigger spoons or even something like this. Everybody has these in their ta tackle box. Uh-oh, I'll be back. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Everybody has these in their tackle box. Here is a, a small floating Rapala. So basically, I'm looking to, to troll something near the surface that doesn't dive very much. Um, I also love to top line with flies. So spoons, small plugs, flies, grubs, all that stuff is going to work for top lining. Now, the question I always get about top lining is how far back do I want to have the lure working behind the boat? And uh, let's start with boats. Rule of thumb for boats, if you're fishing from a power boat, you want that lure back there 100, 125 feet, something like that. If you think the fish are really spooky, maybe you go 150 feet. Maybe you go all the way to 200 feet. That's a long way. Um, but basically, 100 feet is a good starting point. Now, out of your kayak, you can work way shorter than that. I would say 50 is probably the minimum, and that's probably too much, but... 50 is a good place to start. I noticed that I spend a lot of time top lining anywhere from 50 to 75 feet back. Um, the biggest, as I recall, the biggest trout I've caught, the biggest wild rainbow I've caught, I caught an Elmanor a few years ago. I got it on a trolling fly, and I believe that fish was 75, it was either 65 or 75 feet back. So less than 100 feet behind the kayak. That's kind of my rule of thumb on the distance that I have the lure back. Um, final thought. There are some lures, like, like this Trigger Spoon Magnum or the Rapala. Put that back there, no problem, no additional weight, and it's going to work just fine. If I put this back 75 feet with no additional weight, this thing's going to be working anywhere from 18 inches to 2 feet deep. Just about perfect, man. If I got some chop on the water, it's going to be swimming right under that chop, and uh, fish are going to look up, see it. Looks like a substantial meal, hopefully fish on. Now, if I'm trolling something like a fly that, that it really has no weight to it, if I just top line that with no weight, it may or may not get down and it may not get down very far if it gets down at all and it just may not run properly. So in those situations, it makes sense to add a little bit of weight, just enough weight to kind of get it down. 
Now, there's a lot of ways you can add weight to a to a rig like this and still, you know, be top lining. For, kind of for me, I define top lining as anything in the top, you know, 10 feet of the water column where I'm not using lead core, I'm not using a downrigger, it's just back there doing its thing. So I'll say that's from anywhere from zero to 10 feet is where I'm top lining. Now, you can add weight here a number of different ways. You could, you could put on a bullet weight before you tie on your swivel and that would be on the line, that would pull it down. That's cool, but if you want to change it, you have to cut everything off, okay? So that's kind of a bummer. You could add split shot. Sometimes I do that, but the thing you gotta know with split shot is one, you're gonna have to remove it at some point probably. And I'm always worried, I'm a little paranoid, I, I own that, I'm a little paranoid. Um, I worry that that's gonna nick my line and it's gonna cost me a big fish. So I came up with this. It's a really simple way to add weight and I keep a few of these in my tackle box. I just tie them up and uh, you could do the same thing. All you need, you just need a pack of snap swivels, some heavy line, in this case that's 20, I think that's 20 pound fluorocarbon there. And you see I got a little egg sinker on there. I would make these up and say, oh, eighth ounce, quarter ounce, half ounce, maybe three quarters of an ounce. Just keep these in your tackle box and here's what you want to do. I'll let this go here. You just want to insert this between the leader and that trolling swivel. So let me open this up here. Bear, bear with me here. I'm opening up these snaps. So I'm going to snap that right there. Just snap that together just like that. And then on the other end of that, I'm going to snap my leader on there, just like, well, if I wasn't old and blind, I would have got it the first time, but I got it nevertheless. So right there. So I think this is a quarter ounce egg sinker. So as you can see there, no fuss, no muss, no struggle. Well, a little struggle because I'm old and blind. I added a quarter ounce of weight to my rig. Now, if I want to add more, I just snap that out and go with that. If I want to put maybe a Rapala on that's going to dive a little bit, maybe I don't need that on there anymore, I just take it out, I put it back in my tackle box. The reason I tie it with 20 pound test is I want to, you know, I want it to last for a while. It's fluorocarbon line, so the fish aren't going to see it. Plus, they got all this hardware around it. They, they don't worry about that, honestly. It just doesn't seem to put them off at all. But anyway, I would make up a few of those in different weights keep them in the tackle box. That way it's easy to add or subtract weight when you want a top line. And that's pretty much the, the size of it. Um, sometimes I'll top line with a Dodger, not very often. Um, usually it's a naked lure, just something. I want them to see a nice strong silhouette of something above their head that they want to feed on. They're going to run up there and grab it. Um, and I'll do that, you know, at any time during the day, if I got chop, but uh, you know, certainly early and late in the day, if I have overcast, I remember, chop makes the fish feel safe, but rainbows are also attracted to current. And what, what we see as chop on the surface, a little bit of white cap action, that's just a visual manifestation of current. Those fish will pull up right underneath that chop. They feel safe. There's a little current there. There's more oxygen there. And it just, just makes them feel their oats, man. So that is a great way to go. I catch a lot of fish top lining. Um, I top line a lot. So, you know, Wes, my, my partner, he prefers to troll a little bit deeper than me. So everybody's kind of got their own style. But uh, that for me, that's top lining in a, in, a, in a thumbnail sketch there, Gerald. I hope that helps you out. Hope it helps everybody out here on the channel. I will say this, some of the, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. Many of the biggest trout that I've caught over the last, say, two years, came in the top 10 feet of the water column. One thing you can say about trout that are up top, if you, see, if you mark a fish down at 40 feet, maybe it's feeding, maybe it's not. You're marking a trout up, or you, you're, you're encountering a trout, you can't often mark them up in the top 10 feet, but if you encounter a trout that's up in the top 10 feet of the water column, very often, those fish are on the hunt. They're looking to feed, and you have a pretty good chance of triggering a strike from those fish if they're up there in that, uh, that top, top end of the water column. Anyway. I've rambled on and on and on and on and on here. I am signing off for now. If you are looking for gear, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com. You'll find everything you need, including triggers, spoons, and rods, and all that stuff and more. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. 
Um, I wish you the best of luck out on the water, Gerald. I bet you're going to be out there at Whiskey Town and Shasta because you live up there in Redding. There's a lot of other great fisheries up there too. Anyway, good luck. Stay safe. Wear the life jacket. That's a must when you're in the kayak or any kind of small craft. And I will catch you here next time on YouTube. I'm